Hello everybody, I'm Matthew Orson and so I'm a hex, so welcome back to another episode of the Tactical Masterclass series with me, Matthew, and our manager, Nick Wick, the North Korean Dunderhead. Now, if you haven't watched last episode, go watch it now, it'll be on the eye above or down at the bottom of the description, just below the, the actual part of the description part. Oh, wow, I've actually written words uh, where all the end cards go, but if you Go check it out, you can check out last episode where we were in the championship. Got promoted in our third season with Cambridge and our third promotion in three years. But if you are excited for what we can do in the Premier League, either way it'll be the highest ever finish Cambridge have ever recorded because I've never been in the top flight of English football before. So if you like the video for that reason, you can also subscribe so you get more Tactical Masterclass because this is like a road to glory, a journeyman and a tactic test show, thing, whatever, a video, <laughs> uh, all in one go. Uh, if you can also comment a comment saying, boy, can't wait to see what transfers you get up to. And yeah, when you hit the subscribe button, why don't you also hit the bell so you never always get notified for when we upload. Well, when I upload, not we, and there's no one else helping me with this. Anyway, let's get into uh, the video. So last episode, we of course beat Cambridge's highest ever league finish, which I think was fifth or something in real, in like the 91-92 season. So they got into the playoffs then, and then they got relegated in the next season. I didn't know this personally, because it was well before I was born. I was born in 96. 13 years before I got interested in football, I was about six or seven when I started taking interest in football. I was playing the beef games, but then it was around about eight when I got a season ticket with Derby that I actually fell in love with football, even though I didn't know the rules properly still. Yeah, uh, Norwich got promoted as champions. We finished second and Birmingham finished fourth and got promoted through the playoffs. Reading, Oxford and Preston were all the teams getting relegated in this 2026-2027 season. And so we've got a load of players in the squad. This is basically anyone with two star ability or higher. So if we quickly go to people leaving at the end of the season. Uh, Philip Moani did his job uh, on loan this season, halfway through the season. I don't reckon he'll be given a contract next for next season. Uh, Basha Humphreys I would like to get, but I think we can get better, so I don't think we'll go for him. Uh, Will Daniels, uh, Will Dennis, I mean, um, he's he's been with us since League 2, um, where he was our backup goalkeeper, he did well in League 2, but he hasn't played a game since then, and I think it's about time we let him go on his free transfer. We tried to sell him a bit early in the season, but I think it was Woking or Wok Woking or something, or Bromley or something like that, uh, with a similar badge. Uh, I think it was dotted with the W, so I think it was Woking. Um, they paid money for him, but he rejected it in the end. But yeah, all the players, uh, I think we need a new goalkeeper. Um, Daniel Bentley's been brilliant, but hey, we probably need a better goalkeeper. Um, and I think Ramon Yuan can, Juan can be our backup. With Daniel Bentley being the third option and Hickey being sold. Um, Martin Ray has been sold, he was unhappy with first team football and in the end I decided to sell him because I didn't think he could make the step up. So we got a bit of a profit on him he's going to Liverpool FC in Uruguay. Um, Paul Digby, I want to be loyal to him so I'm going to keep him. Um, same with Matt Clark who can be probably do a decent job in the next league. Masterson could probably do a decent job for first season or so. Uh, Killian Phillips, I think he can be capped. Um, Jordan Cousins is hopefully going to be leaving next season. Uh, Ocadino, I think I want to be loyal to him, give him a chance. Seb Revan, probably want to be loyal to him as well, but the, then if an offer comes my way, I'll probably sell him. Um, but we are looking at left backs. Zach La Lancaster, he is asking to leave, and I'm hoping to sell him. Simao, I'm hoping to sell him. And all the other players, I would reckon it just depends on the offer, or and otherwise they're going to be loaned out or stay in the first team squad. 
So we have got a bit of money to spend. The board are backing us. So we've only got 2 million in the bank. They are offering us 30 million in the wage budget and 350,000 odd um, in the wage budget and 30 million in the transfer budget. I think I said that the wrong way around. Um, but yeah. So I think we can get a few good players in for them. Maybe some youngsters from abroad who are under 21 so they can be registered any time. And then they, I don't know, can maybe grow into really good players. I think I'll be doing that for most of the transfers. I'm not sure. It, like I said, it depends on the person coming at the team co and the offer coming in. But we have to look at the tactic we are using for next season. And this is the one. It's going to be Super McKenna. So it's a tactic by Josh Daly once again. And it's kind of based off Ipswich. Because... Uh, McKenna um, he's the manager of uh, Ipswich and he's doing really well really in the uh, championship obviously if you, have, if you don't follow the championship Ipswich are nearly promoted and they've just done really really and they're doing really well in the league um, so yeah it's probably got guaranteed three goals per game so we'll have to see about that or it just says on the tactic screen on FM Scout three plus goals per game um, whether that's XG or actual goals per game, I don't know. But yeah, it's got an advanced forward on attack. Always advanced forwards because they're the most OP um, role in striker position. Attacking midfield on attack, that's also OP. Then an advanced inverted wing on support on the left wing and winger on attack on the right wing. And a DM on support and a DM on defend. And a complete wing back on attack on the left. Wing back on support on the right, two centre defenders on defend, sweep keep on support with an attacking mentality, fairly wide, um, attacking width, shorter passing, and slightly higher tempo with a overlap on the left. Um, run the defence, be more expressive, can't press counter, distribute centre backs and take short kicks. And then higher defensive line, higher high press, a line of engagement thing. Uh, prevents short goalkeeper distribution and much more often, I mean, much and more often on the trigger press and get stuck in. So, hopefully, it'll be a good tactic and hopefully, it'll keep us up because I'm expecting this to be like a thousand or two thousand to one odds favourite to go down or favourite on the title and all that. So, favourites to go down. Practically 20th out of 20 teams in the whole season preview, so we'll have to see about that once the season begins. But I'm going to skip ahead and see what transfers we can do. Hopefully, we'll do very well. We are here on the 2nd of July, so first off, the board are increasing the capacity or something like that of the stadium. But they're also planning, like that, they expanded the stadium. But they're also planning to buy a new stadium and make a new stadium and all that stuff in Cambridge. So, if I'm still around by the time um, the new stadium's made, I'll use in game editor and I'll probably do edit details and like. I'm, I know I'm just cheating here, but I'm not actually cheating. I'll probably name that the new Abbey because you can name it in you can name stadiums in in game editor or outside of the in game editor. I don't know how to do it outside of the in game editor. And if I've got the in game editor, I may as well just do it that way and not ruin another save by making sure it's always called the new Abbey, which I'm thinking of calling it. But yeah, training facilities have also been upgraded as well as youth recruitment, tuning coaching is at its marks. Youth facilities have also been graded or were graded a, a few seasons, a season or so ago. If we go to the season preview, as expected, we're a thousand to one odds, twentieth best team in the league. Uh, only Birmingham are look as bad as us, um, and we're very far off. Seventeenth best team, Norwich, who are the team that just got promoted. So it's going to be very tough to survive, but hopefully we can, and we have made some transfers so far. So if we go back to the end of last season, uh, Martin Rea was sold to Liverpool FC, 
It came in for about 100,000, we sold 185, rising to 235. And then we've bought in Jaden Bogle, 2.8 million. He's a squad player, but I think he's much better than that. He's our regular starting right back. He signed for Leicester last season after being on loan. He's hardly played since the start of the, start of the game. Um, but I think 2.8 million, he'll do his decent job for a few seasons, maybe even more. I don't know, we'll have to figure it out. If we can, if we were up a rep, because we are the lowest rep probably in the Prem at 3 star. I think Birmingham are 3 star and all the rest are 4, 3 and a half. So we need to get to 3 and a half star and then I might look at buying another right back. Um, we also learned out Asman Kamara to Port Vale and uh, Leith Goulza joined us on a free transfer from Brighton. Uh, he could get good, probably won't know if we can sell him. We'll sell him, but his potential is amazing, so hopefully he can get that point. But he's not in our first team plans for now, so hopefully he doesn't get this growth isn't stinted by not playing regularly for our club. Uh, Brendan Aronson is also another player that joined on the free transfer from Leeds. This was the rep to football. I'm training him to be all around here, uh, which will probably take a couple of seasons, which is his length of his contract. But yeah, he looked amazing. Um, he hardly played for Leeds. He played well um, the second season. The first season was on loan to Union Berlin. Um, but he looks really, really good, and hopefully he'll be a vocal player for us. Direct football did that. And this one was me, Crescencio Somerville, another free transfer from Leeds. Uh, he is a left winger, right winger, could also be trained to be at AMC. And he comes in on a free transfer from Leeds, like Brandon Harrison or whatever his name was. And he looks good. And hopefully he'll be the next best thing for us. It is the end of the transfer notice, so we'll look at all the transfers that have happened. So, Gonier who I think joined us last season, he's been loaned out to Bristol Rovers. Fraser Petting has been loaned out to Blackpool. we sold Smile for 2.3 million to Crivelli Rohan. I think that's our highest ever transfer fee sold. Uh, Matthew Murphy, Solomon Oldabayo, and Harley Harrison were all loaned out. Then sold Tom Finch, who was our fourth choice goalkeeper. Burnley have signed him as their third choice, so hopefully he'll do well there. I doubt he'll play at all. Joe Morrill, Horatio Harrow were all loaned out. Dan Barton, who could have been good. He was two and a half star comfortability at the start at the end of last season. But into the new season he went down to two star comp PA. Comfortability, I mean. So I'd, he had been loaned out to Blackpool, so I decided to sell him for 1.2 million to Blackburn. James Lopez was loaned out. Chris Devian Hickey was sold to Grenoble. Then we loaned out Joel Jack Lancaster, um, which I think is a transfer fee to buy if he reaches such a amount of games. Jordan Cousins was loaned out to Blackpool. Ross North loaned out Glenn McDonnell, who could be good. Uh, he was loaned out to Salford. Twy was loaned out, Maston was loaned out. Sold to Sam Rob. He could have got gold, but at 20 I don't think he would reach his potential as soon as he came in on a youth transfer, on a free transfer from Worthing. He started in the National League South and came in in League 2. I reckon he will never get to his potential or his potential is not that good compared to where we are going. So he was sold to Bolton. Quanda uh, never Rose, Alamari, Ruiz, Broadley, Parker, Lynch, Hipwell, Peters, Monday, Armas, Harris, Sinclair, and Butcher were all loaned out. I also sold Leah, Lee Bacon. Well, I was going to say Leah because that's the character from one of my books, even though that's a girl's name in my in my book. So, but I think it's actually called Lee. If King of Hearts is going anything by, um, yeah, he. Also, the same thing as the other goalkeeper he came. Uh, he, as the other player we sold, uh, Robs or whatever his name was. Sam Rob, yeah. Um, he was a free transfer. He was. Uh, he came in on our youth, youth thing, a youth 
came in on a youth report or whatever you call them, I forgot the call. Uh, I've literally forgot the name of the youth intake. He came in, so yeah, he came in on our youth intake. It was mainly loaned out to the National League South. Well, he's had two decent say games, no, maybe not with Avery, but Tom Bridge did decently. And Cult City paid £1 million for him. Uh, I, it was about 500000 I managed to raise it up to 100, £1 million with about 30% salon clause or percentage of sale and I thought it's a good offer for him and again League One goalkeeper youth intake first and half star current potential might not get that way so maybe in the end he'll only be two and a half star for a Premier League side so yeah he's gone other well, people that joined Naveo backboard joined us as our right back alongside um Jaden Bogle, uh, he comes in a free transfer from Heracles, Al Malag. Tom Goller joins us as our main goalkeeper. Quite a hefty amount of transfer, 6.25 million rising, 7.75. Comes in from Hertha. Uh, Chris Karras Singaris joins us on a free transfer from Larissa. Comes in as our um, squad player, but he's a where to accept with this star. George Nevitt comes in from Cardiff as our centre back. Uh, we were trying to get him in the championship season. Or, yeah, yeah the championship season. Uh, for, for a free transfer from Rochdale, where he eventually joined Cardiff. I thought he could still do a good, decent job, he could get better. So he's bought him in for Cardiff for 1.7 million rising to 4. Um, Jack Marsh joins us 10 million rise into 13 million. Um, Breakthrough Prospect, hopefully, will be really, really good in the future. Uh, Max Burton joins us on a free transfer, he could get really good. Thiago Armas also joins us on a free transfer, he could get good. Roy Wilson, 11 million pounds as a squad player stri striker, I reckon he could get even better. Jamie Walling joins us, that was director of football. Chris Peake. Uh, another player that was direct football. Harry Sinclair, that was direct football again. He looks actually quite good. Um, Kayan Sanko Palas, um, just doing so that was direct football again. And then this was direct football, and I wasn't going to go for it, but I thought five, four and a half star comfortability. He's a good player. So he's joined us on for 2.3 million, rising to 2.9 from Norgerland in, I think, Denmark, is it? Yeah, Denmark. I always think Norgeland's a very Norwegian name, so I was getting mixed up because of the Nord, probably. <laughs> but I always expect it to be Norway, and it's actually Dane, Denmark, so yeah. But yes, yeah, he's improving now. We're, we're now we've actually got worse. We're now 2,000 to 1 odds. Well, Birmingham are 900 to 1 odds, so they've got better, we've got worse. So far, the results, we were entirely undefeated in pre-season because we even got a 13-0 victory and a 10-1 victory against Newmarket and Histon. And uh, we didn't play many big teams like off Millwall, Leighton or next to uh, And William too. all the others, just the league clubs that we always get friendlies with. But yeah, the first three games of the season we all lost. We lost to Chelsea. Uh, quite a l didn't deserve to lose it because Nkunku got a goal in the 6th minute and I don't think they deserved it one bit. Norwich were unfortunate to lose against them and Sunderland also unfortunate to lose in a 5-4 loss. Though then again we didn't look as good straight away. But we deserved the draw after the amount of comeback we did in the second half. And then however had a game against Millwall, we beat them in the second round of the AFL Cup. Beat Southampton for our first game of the win of the Premier League season and also winning the third round of the EFL Cup against Oxford. Cully takes us to a respectable 15th position. Three points, same as 18th place Leicester, but hopefully we can get even better. So, the results since last time we drew against Brentford and beat Brighton Leicester, gave up an unbeaten season in September. An unbeaten month in September, not unbeaten season. <laughs> Uh, Man City and Tottenham were lost, beat QPR in the fourth round of the EFL Cup. Birmingham and Everton, Sheffield United were won. Then we went on a quite awful run, 
Lost against Liverpool, lost against Aston Villa, lost against Arsenal, and 4 1 losses against Arsenal and Aston Villa. Then they lost against Liverpool in the quarter final of the FA Cup, lost against Newcastle, lost against Brentford, a draw against West Ham, and a win against Bournemouth. So that currently takes us to 13th. It's not that bad. We're 23 points, we're 10 points off Norwich, who are 18th. And to be fair, Norwich, Sunderland, and Birmingham don't look good enough at all. So it looks like they're the three teams that are going to get eradicated unless Bournemouth end up slipping or Sheffield United. But we don't look as bad as the season preview expects us to be. So season preview is that it'll 900 to 1 because of the performance by having more Birmingham have gone down to 1000 to 1. So we're finally 19th best team in the league. But we've also got unhappy players. Quite a lot of them, in fact. So, Benedetti uh, wants to leave to get better playing time. He, of course, was brilliant last season, but the quick picks have not been giving him chances. So, he's probably going to get sold. Um, Liam Delap wants to go out on loan to get better playing time. I'm probably going to sell him. He's, he's only played with us his entire time at Cambridge, so I think it may as well cash in on. 12 million, I'll be very happy for that. And Singaris also wants to start more games, I'm probably going to sell him as well. Uh, he's hardly played. Zach Marsh wants to go and um, wants to leave. Uh, I'm putting him on loan, however, because he, he was a big transfer. He comes at, came in from Crystal Palace for 10 million in 2013. So, unless we can get 20 million for him, I'm not going to sell him. So, Ramon Juan wants to leave for game time so I might sell him as well in terms of things Jack Lang uh, Lancaster has agreed to sell with Rotherham intermediary fee of 8 million so he's leaving to Rotherham for 4.3 million rising to 10 that is just crazy amounts of money for his quality but I suppose I suppose sometimes when you go when sometimes when you sell players through the loan and it's like fee to buy or buy after a certain amount of games uh, it's always a lower amount for the upfront but then the later is always more and it ends up being more money in the end than it's worth so I was happy with that especially considering I managed to get it down to 5 games per um, played per season or something that it would get sold so it looked like it was going to be destined to sold from straight off uh, and yeah, hopefully now we can make some more transfers. If you want to know how much we've got, we've got four million to spend and about thirty thousand to spend in the wage budget. But we are looking to sell players, so hopefully we'll get more money in and we can get more players in for that reason. January transfer January transfer window has been and happened, so we'll look at the quick transfers that have happened. So Ramon Joan was well first off. Uh, Ngulza was loaned out to Barnet and Bolton was loaned out to Hartlepool. We finally sold Ramon Yuan because he wanted to go, so he was sold to Valeo Valladolid uh, for £2 million. I think that's a really good offer for saying we got him for 825000 last season. No, even this season, yeah. Was it this season? No, it was last season. Yeah, it was last season. Was it? I completely forgot. I've lost my mind. I thought it was last season, but apparently it wasn't. We also sold Benedetti, £9 million to Sampdoria. I'm really happy with that. Uh, Vaughan Valley, Vaughan Mully, Trey Vaughan Mully has been loaned out to the AFC Wimbledon. Connor Masterson was also sold to Charlton. He was not playing enough this season, so we sold him for what well, we could get a profit. Uh, Jack Moss has finally been loaned out. Housing Park has been loaned out. Nujaku, Warling, Gonia and Roy Wilson have all been loaned out. Roy Wilson, of course, being the strike form that was signed for 10 million. Then got a big offer for Liam Dillard. 11 million pounds from LA Galaxy, so I'm really happy to sell him to them. James Lopez was loaned out, and then we also sold Charis Singaris to Burnley for 10 million. And Luke Lynch has been loaned out to Halifax. So that gave us quite a lot of money to spend in January. So if we signed it with good transfers. 
So Weverson joined us for 1.2 million as our main choice left back, uh, at least for this season, from Aruka. Uh, Samuel Portugal joins us as our backup goalie. A bit of expensive, 1.8 million, but I think he's worth it. At 33, he can has the experience to be really, really good. Diego Capello also joined us as a new centre back, uh, two million pound from Torino. Uh, Luka Topol- Topolovic, who, if you follow the Derby County save that we did in the beta, and it's what one which has just uh, finished its fifth and um, final season, no third and final season, sorry. Uh, we had signed Topolovic in the Premier League season, and he was a wonder kid. Uh, in this Wonder Kids session, he's gone to Lazio instead of Derby. Uh, so yeah, he hasn't played much, but hopefully he'll be good. Oh, Gray comes in, ten million pounds from Wolves. I think this is the best deal we've ever done. If you've been following the manager legend save, you'll know Arch Gray plays for West Ham in my save when I'm manager West Ham, so I know how good he can be. Uh, he was at Leeds, didn't play much, I went to Nottingham Forest and play much, then Wolves, where he's had not many games played. So, this is the most he's ever played in the season, which was with uh, Wolves and uh, Wolves' third season in the champion, uh, third season with hit with Wolves, and his second season in the championship with them. So yeah, um, I think he could get really, really good if potential is anything to go by. I know how good he can get a football manager, so I was kind of cheating the system and thinking, you know, Archie Gray, he's covered from my scout reports. Oh, I know how good he can be. I might as well sign him for 10 million. That's a steal, because we can then sell him for 40 million if he does get to his potential. Then we strengthened up the squad with three loanies. So Nicolas Sanchez is loaned in from Atletico. Jonathan Vrana joins us on loan from Ralph Sporting. And Kerr Smith joins us as our new centre back on loan for Maston Villa. Results have been better than they were in December, but uh, we won against Port Vale and Norwich. Port Vale being in the FA Cup third round. We then lost against Chelsea and Sunderland. Sunderland, really poor result. Uh, drew against Southampton. Drew against Man City in the fourth round of the FA Cup, which I'm really happy about. And now we've got a home tie, so hopefully we can win that. And um, Brighton will also be yeah, in the Prem. Corny takes us to 14th in the league, 13 points off 18th place Sheffield United. Birmingham look destined to get relegated, uh, and how it is Norwich and Sheffield United are getting a bit of a gap between them and Sunderland, and even more gap between them, Sunderland and Southampton, and then also Bournemouth, and Brentford and Leicester and all that stuff. So. A few more good results, we could actually get into 8th place and 7th place, which would be unreal. But we're doing amazingly, amazingly well. Now to finish off the rest of the season with these players that are not getting good average ratings, but doing decently anyway. So yeah, I'll skip ahead and see what happens then. And the rest of the season didn't go too well, in all honesty. Uh, we lost against Man City in the 4th round of the FA Cup in the replay. Beat Leicester, then lost to Man City again. Beat Tottenham, which was an amazing result. Then drew against uh, Birmingham. Lost against Man U- uh, lost against Everton and Sheffield United. Drew against Man U, then beat Liverpool. Lost against Man U, lost against Arsenal, lost against Aston Villa. Quite thrashed in that game, really. And then it went a bit bad on the last three games of the season where we were guaranteed something. So, I won't tell you what it was, you'll have to wait out to find out, but it's probably guaranteed by that. <laughs> you can probably tell by that. <laughs> I forgot you can see it on the screen. Uh, but yeah, we beat Newcastle, drew against West Ham, and beat Bournemouth. And because we was guaranteed safety in Aston Villa game, uh, we just completely lit up the game. Um, we ended up finishing 12th, 48 points. Teams going down in the end were Birmingham. 16 points were really poor Norwich 21 points really poor and Sunderland 25 points really poor and the difference between Sunderland and Sheffield United was immense in the end 
So yeah, we survived and did really, really well. 12th place, I'm just a standard. So this tactic, I know you expect tactics by the community to be all these, oh, we win every game and you get promoted or you get the champions and you expected to finish 19th, but I think considering Cambridge uh, still have a squad for League One or lower championship, and Rab for lower championship, it's just amazing. Maybe on the championship, League One Rab, such as the meteoric, meteoric rise of Cambridge. So if we go to her um, players, um, in the end, Tom Guller was our main goalkeeper. Daniel Bentley ended up being second choice uh, after playing a game, but I think that was before Samuel Portugal came in. Couple didn't play as many games as I expected them to. Kerr Smith played well. Jaden Bogle was the main starting right back. Dig P played amazingly, considering he's a two star corner ability and he's expected to be like a, I don't know, a League One, League Two player. Matt Clark was also good. Uh, Hayden Carter was didn't play much. Killing Phillips was good. Stuart Rose, who was a youngster, didn't play a few times. Reverson didn't play as many times as I expected him to. Arcadina did amazingly well for his quality. Carvey Wright was probably one of our standout players. Sarah Reverend did really well and also played a load of games for Sydney was loaned out last season. Liam Bennett played a few games as well. However he is asking to leave because he won he was meant to be a regular starter. And yeah he was well player for us so he put him on the transfer list. Try and get 14.5 million if we can. Uh, backboard didn't play as much as well. He was all off the bench. Adam Mayer, probably one of our best players again, 8 goals, 11 assists, uh, Varane and Sanchez, Varane the Hot didn't play once, Sanchez was really really good and if we could afford him I'd try and go for him but I don't think, I think we can get better players. Archie Gray was brilliant uh, when halfway through the season, George Thomas also did well even though he's on a happy and spin on France for this but if we can get 12 million I'll be happy for it. He's a regular star but of course I've set him up as a uh, squad player. Uh, Kai Yearn played a few games, Luka Topovic didn't start many, or didn't start any or play it much. Brendan Aronson, best player in the whole team. Uh, Somerville, also very, very good. Um, seven goals at 10 assists, while Aronson got 15 goals and 12 assists. Uh, Bethlison uh, did well as well, uh, though his average rating wasn't the best. Tyrus John Jules did average as well, 13 goals, and Ethan Weasley did good as well, 13 goals once again. So those two will probably be around for another season, I should think. But yeah, let's quickly go to season review. So of course we're nothing. Um, signing the season was of course Brandon Amerson, I was too expected. The only player that we actually signed that got above a 7 rating was Aronson. Um, 6.9s for Somerville and backboard. Backboard, like I said, at the start of game. Chris Smith got 6.89 alongside Arthur Gray. Um, Gula got 6.8. Um, Sanchez did decently as well, 6.7. All the rest didn't do well. And Jonathan Ferran and Samuel Portugal didn't even play a game. Transfers out, of course, we sold quite a lot of players. So we sold. Um, Liam Delap for 11 million, um, Masterson for 7, and Benedetti for 9, and Simal for 7. So we broke four of our record transfer fees sold for selling players in one season. The board are pleased that we achieved mid table in the league, so 12th place, that's really good. Emirates FA Cup, please reach the fourth round. And the pleas to qualify final the FR Cup, but to be fair, they were only one thing competitive in those both times. Biggest win was the 5 1 victory against Bournemouth. Match to remember 3 1 victory against Southampton. Goal of the season was Myers' goal in the 17th minute and 3 2 loss against Chelsea. We've stayed the same on the reputation, but our sponsorship's gone up by 2 million. Broadcast revenues, of course, gone up by. 89 million, 88 million to be expected in the Premier League. Uh, corporate and hospitality has gone down, but 
competition prize money has gone up because of the league finish and the Premier League once again. Premier money coming in, doing well. Um, Manchester commercial has gone down. For some reason, uh, we could only get about 56% full on our seats for some reason. I don't know why. Total merchandise sales 1 million sold, uh, 14,000 sold in the shirts. Somerville, Aronson, Great, Meyer, and White were the best sold players. Tom Goller was our best goalkeeper, Bogle was the best right back, Ocadina and Clark as our two centre backs, uh, Weaverson or Weverson as our left back. I think he could go in the summer to be fair. Uh, he's gone down in potential ability all the time. Current ability, I mean all the time. And I don't think I think we can get better. Harvey White and Killing Phillips as our two DMs with Somerville as our right winger, Aronson as our AMC and Meyer as our left winger. And we and we Ethan Wheatley as our striker. But Ethan Wheatley is apparently an icon for Cambridge, and I'm not even an icon yet, and I just think that's crazy. Wheatley had one good season where he scored 30 goals, and I've gotten promoted three times in three years and done really well in the champ in the Premier League. I should be an icon by now, but I'm not. <laughs> Fans player of the season was Aronson, young player of the season was Wheatley, signing of the season was Aronson, goal of the season was Mayer. Top goal scorer was Aronson with 15. Most assists was Aronson with 12. Most player of the match awards was Tyrese John Jules with 4. Highest average rating was Aronson with 7.1. Highest passes completed by 9 minutes with 56 was Matt Clark. Highest transfer fee paid was 11 million for Roy Wilson. Highest transfer fee received was 11 million for the boy Liam Delap. And competition Skybet Championship player of the season was probably Ethan Wheatley. I don't know why it's showing you that, because we're in the prime. It must have happened into last season. Into this season. And Skybet Championship Golden Boat was caught with Ethan Wheatley. Young player of the season was Ethan Wheatley, so I think you can see why he might be an icon for Cambridge. Um, but yeah, I don't think I need to show you anything else. So yeah, transfers to spend. We've got 8 to 1 to spend in the next window and 300,000 to spend or 400,000 practically in wage budget so I'm really looking forward to spending the cash. If it goes to people leaving at the end of the season uh, it's only the low knees um, though we might be trying to get some good of some of the other players like Digby, Daniel Bentley will probably get from the season but some of these two and a half star current abilities We'll try and sell them and get in three and a half star, three star, so yeah. But that is enough for this episode. If you have enjoyed our successful season in the Premier League, um, like the video. If you're new to this channel and you want to help support it, subscribe to the channel. And hit the bell as well, whether you're a returning viewer or a new subscriber. So you never miss an upload for when I upload. Uh, comment saying... I didn't expect you to do this well, or I expect you to do better with this tactic, I don't know. And talking about that, check out the tactic. So it's by Josh Daly, it's called Super Mechano, it's, link is in the FM Scat, link is an FM Scat link, it's so down in the description, so click that, take you to FM Scout, you click download, put in your documents, tactics, and it should automatically be in the FMF file, and then you just click that load you're going to get super mckenna and you click load and then it loads it so yeah check out all my socials while i write as well and yeah i'll see you all next time hex sand girl bye everybody